Hey everyone, before we get started this morning at Circle, I need to correct something I said last week about spider body parts. I misnamed them and I want to make sure you guys have the right names for them. So this is actually the abdomen of the spider. And this part here, it's the head and the thorax put together. So this is the cephalothorax. So spiders, arachnids have eight legs and two body parts, the cephalothorax and the abdomen. Sorry about that, that was my mistake. You guys ready for a circle? Let's go. Hi everybody. Today we are going to talk about insects some more. Last week we learned about what makes an insect an insect. What do you remember? What do all insects have? Yes, six legs, good. What else do insects have? Two antenna. Mm -hmm. An exoskeleton. Very good. They have a hard shell or bones on the outside. Good. What else? Wings. They have wings at some point in their life. Good. How many body parts? Three. You have a good memory. Do you remember what the names of the body parts are? Head, thorax, and abdomen. Very good. Um, why don't you stand up and let's sing our insect body parts song. Ready? Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Insects have six legs and two antenna. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Very nice. You know what, since you're standing up, let's sing it one more time. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Insects have six legs and two antenna. <laughs> Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Very good. Have a seat. Get comfortable. We're going to take a quiet minute. And during our quiet minute, I want you to think about your favorite insect. Very nice. That was a full minute. Tell me what insect you were thinking of. Good choice. I think you can probably guess what I was thinking of what my favorite insect is. It's a praying mantis. So last week while I was talking about insects, did anyone notice what was on my rug? It's here again today. This is actually one of my pet praying mantises. This is what's called a ghost mantis. Let's see here. There we go. She has fantastic camouflage. She looks like a leaf. You can see her legs. On praying mantises, the front legs are actually specially adapted. That means they've changed over time to help them catch their food. But those are legs. Hi, baby. She has two antenna. It's kind of hard to tell, but she does have three body parts, head, thorax, and abdomen. And she even has wings. 
Um, I've never seen her open her wings because she's a pet. She doesn't need to fly to protect herself and she doesn't need to hunt her food because I feed her. So they're very, isn't that, isn't the camouflage? It's amazing. She looks like a leaf. Very cool. And see how she just kind of wavers back and forth. Imagine if she were in Africa, where these guys come from. If she were hanging out in a pile of dead leaves, don't you think that that would be really good camouflage to see her just waving like a leaf on a tree? So, we are going to talk a little bit more about praying mantises later. So I just wanted to introduce her. She's going to hang out for today. Very good. All right, so last week we talked about what an insect is, and today I wanna to talk about the life cycle of an insect. So from the time that they're born to the time that they become grown-ups, they go through many changes, and this change is called metamorphosis. Try that with me, metamorphosis. Uh, metamorphosis means to change. So insects change the way they look depending on which stage of life they're at. Um, some insects go through what is called a complete metamorphosis. That means, kind of like butterflies, that means that they change how they look entirely in their lives. For example, a, a baby butterfly is a caterpillar, looks like a little worm, and a grown-up butterfly is a butterfly. So they look completely different. And in order to go through a complete metamorphosis, an insect has four different stages of life. They start out as an egg. They become larva, that's your caterpillar. Then they become a pupa. In the case of a um, caterpillar, that's when they go into chrysalis. And we'll talk about that shortly here. And then they become an adult. So I actually have a book here, it's called Caterpillar to Butterfly. It's from National Geographic Kids, and it's written by Laura Marsh. And we are going to let this book tell us a little bit about the life stages of a butterfly. Stage one, egg. A mother butterfly lays many eggs on a leaf or branch. Each egg is close to food, caterpillar food, that is. Most caterpillars eat leaves, so it's really good that they're close to those. Stage two, caterpillar. The tiny caterpillar bites a hole in the egg. It crawls out. The caterpillar is very hungry. The caterpillar eats its shell. Then it eats the leaf it's on. The caterpillar moves to another leaf. It eats that too. The caterpillar grows and grows. It gets too big for its skin. It sheds its exoskeleton like a snake. Snakes don't have an exoskeleton. The new skin fits for a while, but then the caterpillar is too big for that skin too. Caterpillars shed their skin four or five times. That's a really good picture. You can actually see the shed exoskeleton, the skin there with the new fresh caterpillar. Stage three, chrysalis. By now the caterpillar is ready to rest. It hangs upside down. It sheds its skin one more time. The new layer is called a chrysalis. It is a hard shell. Inside the caterpillar is changing. It stays in the chrysalis for 10 to 14 days starting there so it becomes a caterpillar sheds its skin one more time and then it builds this chrysalis around itself stage four butterfly the chrysalis moves it splits open the butterfly wiggles out its wings are wet and crumpled blood pumps into the butterfly's wings they get bigger 
and harden. The wings dry. Now the butterfly is ready to fly. Have a good trip, butterfly. So that's the metamorphosis that butterflies go through, but they're not the only insect that goes through a metamorphosis that has four stages. Do you remember the mealworms I showed you last week with their exoskeleton? Well, they're gonna come back. So let's see here. I have a mealworm. Come here, buddy. Remember these guys? There we go. So this is the larva state. Unfortunately, I do not have any eggs. They are too small for me to find in that culture, in their cup that they live in. So this is the second stage of life for this insect. Um, mealworms are actually the larva of a type of beetle. It's a type of darkling beetle. And I'll show you one of those in a moment here. So after our little mealworm sheds its exoskeleton, uh -oh, it actually turns into a pupa. Let me get closer here so we can try and show this to you. The pupa, in the case of these beetles, looks like this, if I can keep it in the cup. You know what? I'm actually going to do some. There we go. So that is the pupa of this guy. Now, as after they shed from the pupa stage, they become darkling beetles. So there's the grown up. So here you have three life stages of one type of bug. You have the pupa, I'm sorry, the larva, the pupa, and the adult. The adult beetle has three body parts, two antenna, it has wings on its back, and of course, six legs. So there we go, better than I thought it would. And I actually have to separate these because the grown-ups try to eat the babies. So, so that is another example of four different life stages. Remember the fruit flies that I feed my mantises? They go through four life stages as well. They start out as eggs down here in the bottom. This is a special food just for fruit flies. Unfortunately, um, there aren't any larvae in here right now. They've all already turned into pupa because this is an older set. But you can see up here, these are the pupa. So in there, the larvae are like little white worms. They're kind of weird. And they climb up here and create their pupa, their little hard shell. And when they come out, they are full fruit flies. Pretty neat. Some other insects that go through a full metamorphosis, a four stage metamorphosis, are um, bees, wasps, butterflies, moths, beetles, Lots of insects go through a complete metamorphosis. They change their way they look entirely. Now, other insects go through what is called an incomplete metamorphosis, which means they change the way they look, but not quite as much as other insects. Um, a great example of that is our friend, my friend, the praying mantis. Yes. So praying mantises and other insects that go through an incomplete metamorphosis only go through three stages. Um, dragonflies, 
grasshoppers. Those are another example of insects that only go through three life stages. They start as eggs, and then when they hatch, they become what are called nymphs. Try that with me. Nymph. Isn't that a fun word? Nymphs kind of look a lot like the grown-up version of that insect, but they don't have wings. They will still continue to change how they look. So I have here a nice selection of things. Um, I have some praying mantis egg cases. You can't see the actual eggs because they're inside a protective layer. So the eggs actually hatch inside and then the nymphs come out. But because praying mantises are so very different, all of their egg cases, which in the case of praying mantises, they're called Uthica, look different. But this is one that you may see here in Colorado. This is called a Carolina mantis Uthica or egg sac. So each of these little holes would have an egg in it and a baby praying mantis could come out. So these you can actually find if you're going for a walk in nature, you can find them in your garden. They're pretty neat. Another very popular one, <coughs> excuse me, that you can buy at Good Earth even because they're really good for your garden. This is a Chinese mantis Uthica or egg case. So all the little tiny baby mantises are inside there. Kind of crazy. I had one of these hatch this size and it gave me about 200 babies. So something this small can give you 200 little baby praying mantises. That's a lot. And here I have another example. Um, this is again a ghost mantis and she has actually laid her egg cases. There's one there and there's another one right there. These probably won't hatch because she's never been with a boy, um, but female purring mantises will still lay egg cases even if they haven't been mated. So pretty neat. It's hard to think that something so little, so little makes something so big eventually, huh? All right. So praying mantises start out as eggs. And again, the eggs are inside the egg case. When they hatch, they look almost exactly like big praying mantises, but they're a little bit different. So I have here, I'm going to get closer to you guys. I have here, this is called an Indian jeweled mantis. They are from India, as the name implies. And this is a nymph. There we go. Say hi, buddy. There you go. There we go. All right. This one's name is Ang. Oh. And he's a jumper. She. Whoa. Okay, hang on. Technical difficulties. I've got a runaway mantis. Whoa. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right. That was terrifying. Okay. <laughs> How about we do this instead? Here is little Aang in his enclosure. And he looks a lot like he will look as a grown-up, except he does not have wings. You can kind of see, let's see if we can do this. Here you go. You can see his abdomen is curled up. Right? So. Aang is actually only about two molts away from becoming a grown-up, from getting wings. One of my other mantises, Soka, is now an adult. This is the same type. This is also a jeweled 
mantis, an Indian jeweled mantis, and he has developed wings. He is a grown up. He will not shed his skin anymore. So this is the exact same kind of mantis. You again? And there we go. Look at those wings. See his antenna? Six legs. Wings. Very, very cool. So this is the adult stage. So he starts as an egg, molts into a nymph, or changes into a nymph, and then after, for praying mantises, about, f and now that you can fly, five to seven <laughs> molts, that's shedding of the exoskeleton. After that, they become grown-ups with their wings. One more look. My goodness. You guys are making it hard for me. All right, and I'm going to put him back in his enclosure. Come on, big guy. And see his body parts. All right. Let's do some art without the praying mantises running away, hopefully. <laughs> Oh, except Demi is running away now. Goodness gracious, you guys. All right. Go back to your stick. Thank you, honey. Okay, for this artwork, you're going to need some objects that you collect from outside. So I went in my garden and got some leaves, some little sticks, because we are going to make an insect out of found objects. So I have my, my Uji Flippy here. Let's see, I have my newspaper mat. Um, piece of paper. And let's see what I found. I have some leaves. Um, some different leaves. My fish shape leaf. Some juniper berries and twig. Um, just some little sticks. A whole bunch of leaves, mostly. More twigs. Um, this is a piece of root from an iris plant. I had to cut mine up to get them apart and found that in the front yard. So and then I've just got some more leaves, more leaves, 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 leaves. So we're gonna make an insect. I highly recommend using um, white glue for this because glue sticks probably aren't going to do too well keeping these on the page. I don't have any white glue, but I do have glitter glue. So that's what I'm gonna use today. So let's see. Insects have three body parts, head, thorax, abdomen. So I'm going to pick three. Ooh, that kind of reminds me of Demi's abdomen. Hmm. I think this might make a good thorax. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I think this might make a good thorax. And I'm, I'm actually going to use this root for my head. So I'm going to start with those. Head. I take this little piece of stem off. 
use that for my thorax. And my abdomen. Same thing, I'm just gonna take that little piece off. I'm using dried leaves because I don't want, um, I picked some dandelion leaves earlier and they got really floppy and wilty and so they didn't hold their shape very well. So I'm not going to use those. So there we go. I have head, thorax, abdomen. Now I need legs, legs next. Um six of them. I think I'm going to use some of these little twigs. Oops. I'm going to break them. One, two. Ooh, I can use the stems off some of these leaves. Ooh, I like that. Three, four. Five and six. All right, so I'm going to glue those on. I'm going to attach them to the abdomen. Two, three, four. Five and six. There we go. We're getting there. Um, I'm going to give my insect two eyes and I'm going to use these juniper berries because they're nice and round and they remind me of eyeballs. So remember, insects have different numbers of eyes. <laughs> I'll show you this in a moment. Well, no, I'll show you now his eyes. And of course we need two antenna. I think I'm actually going to use some of this evergreen bit here. Let's see. I'm going to make some pieces. You know, different insects have different types of antenna. Um, some of them, like the praying mantis, just kind of have one, much like the butterfly. Ooh, this smells good. It smells like Christmas. But some of them have big, fluffy antenna. Uh, there's a type of moth called a Luna moth, and they have the most amazing, fluffy antenna. All right. So I've got my 
only two antenna. And while we're thinking about it, I have a picture of a Luna moth here, and you can see its big fluffy antenna. All right, let's see if we can get these guys to stick. Nope. Oh, okay, they're not going to stand up, but that's okay. All right, two antenna. And, you know, I'm actually going to use these leaves. These came off of a plant from inside. These came off of an Easter lily. And I'm actually going to use those for my wings. And the wings are going to cover up the legs a little bit. They might cover up the abdomen as well. That's how it works in insects. So here, after I put my name on it, I have my own insect. It has head, thorax, abdomen, six legs, two antenna, and wings. So I hope you guys enjoy making your own nature leaf found object insect. So see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed learning about insects and their metamorphosis.